What is going on guys? Welcome to your let's see 67th C++ tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to be teaching you guys how to read custom data. So in the last tutorial what we did is let me scroll to my desktop watermelon we created this players text file and what it did is basically allowed us to create our own custom file structure and what we did is we were making our computer game with a bunch of different players we gave them an integer as the ID number, a name, which was a string, and their bank account, which was of course a double. So now we have all our data right here, and it's laid out in a very specific way. No other program could really understand what this data is used for except our program. So now that we have that data, we need to be able to read it specifically in our own custom way. So it's a little bit different than writing it for a couple of reasons which I'm going to be talking about. So the first thing I want to stress to you guys is you can't use OF stream. OF is for outputting data to a stream. For example, when you have text and you want to output it to a file or write it to a file. Whenever you want to read data in from a file, you need IF stream. This allows you to take data from a file and read it into, you know, the computer's memory or whatever. So it's the opposite of OF stream. OF is for writing data to a file. IF is for reading data from a file. So then you go ahead and create your file object. I'm just going to name mine the file. And then, of course, is a constructor, optional optional constructor. It can take the name of that file. So players.txt was the name of that file. Again, you can either... Um, create the text file document or excuse me what am I gonna say the file object on one line of code or break it up in two I always like to put it on one line of code just like when we were writing to a file so aside from that what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be reading the data from that document so remember that document had three pieces of information in it on each row it had an ID number a name and the amount of money so let's go ahead and make variables to hold that data int ID and then we'll make string name to store their name and double money to store their you know bank account information so basically how we're going to do that is this we're going to create a while loop and the while loop's going to loop through each piece of information whether it's their id number their name or their money and it's going to store it in a variable and whenever we have that information stored in the variables we can do you know whatever we want that we can load it into our computer game um, we can just go ahead and print it out on the screen we can go ahead and send it to a database on the internet but basically what we have to do first is take that data from the file and we need to store it on variables in our program so I want to talk to you guys about how we're going to do this remember I said in the last tutorial that every file has end a file marker and C++ pretty much is going to run this program until it gets to the end of file marker and then when it gets to the end it's going to return something called a null pointer so let me go ahead and actually uh, code this and then I can explain what I'm talking about so just like before whenever we were you know whenever you use like CIN to get information from the keyboard and then you could store it in variables like this well now we're getting information from the file so we go ahead and type the file and that's where the information is coming from and we're going to store an ID the first piece of information and the second piece of information we're going to store in name and the third piece of information we're going to store in money so it's basically going to loop through this while loop and it's going to look at the file each time and every time it gets to a new piece of information it's going to store an ID name and money now let me say this whenever you're working with files there's something called a file pointer and let me go ahead and open my document again and I could probably show it to you guys really easily uh... where's a watermelon players so whenever you're working with files you have something called a file pointer now the job of this file pointer is to keep track of where in the file C++ is working with so what it's going to do is this file pointer let me go ahead and skinny up my program a little bit is going to start at the very beginning and by the way the end of file pointer is what right there where my cursor is but anyways your file pointer always starts at the very beginning what this loop is going to do right now is it's going to read the first piece of information so it's going to see right there that's the first piece of information 
that number one right there is what I want to store in ID. So next it says, all right, this next piece of information store in name. So it's going to scroll, the file pointer is going to go to this next piece of information, and it's going to see this one right here, Bucky, should be stored in name. And then it's going to say, all right, now the next piece of information, which is this right here, I'm supposed to store this in the variable money. So that's what's going to happen the first time this program loops through. So the next time it loops through, the file pointer is going to be right here. So that's why we didn't have to change any line of code right here because we're working with the same object, yet it knows the next piece of information is this too because the file pointer, the next time this loop runs, is going to be at the beginning of the next line or at the end of this line, pretty much the same spot. So that is how the file pointer is going to be working. And by the way, it actually is called the file pointer. So you know, I'm not making that up. So that's why this loop is going to run fine each time. So now that we have the correct pieces of information stored in ID, name, and money, we can just go ahead and if we were making a game or something, we would want to load them into the game. But for now, let's just go ahead and print them out on the screen. So C out, print out ID, and then go ahead and I'm gonna make a comma separated list instead of you know spaces because you know if you're working with Excel well never mind I'll they use comma separated list but anyways I just like how it looks so the next piece of information is name and I'm just gonna add a comma right there and lastly what is it money so after this I'm just gonna go ahead and end that line and whenever you run this program it should work just fine so what it did is it read that file from the text file one bucky sixty sixty five point four seven and it did what we wanted with it and in this case what we wanted to do with it is just output it on the screen so we said alright now that we have the information output the ID and then a comma and then bucky and then a comma and then money and then the end of the line so it goes to a new line so then where this is working in the file is it's at the end of the file so whenever you run this loop again the next idea jumps down to it is number two it runs the entire loop it's at the end of that line and then whenever you run this loop again it jumps down to the ID number three and it runs that line of code and how this does this while loop know when to stop because whenever the end of file marker has been reached C++ knows already without us having to type any extra code that a null pointer is returned basically it changes this boolean to false so whenever this is working this is true whenever it gets to the end of file C++ already knows that this loop should be false we don't have to explicitly you know write an if statement in here to check it or anything it's one of the cool features with C++ it automatically knows when to end so that's one cool thing that we don't have to worry about another cool thing that we don't have to worry about is whenever we're working with this IF stream or OF stream object whenever the file reaches the end of the file and this goes to false this object is gonna get deleted automatically in the deconstructor remember when we talked about constructors and deconstructor the deconstructor is gonna call the close file method so remember like in the first file tutorial I told you that told you guys that you need to close your files in order to free up resources well what this IF stream construct or excuse me deconstructor is gonna do is as soon as this file object gets deleted this file is gonna close automatically so that's two things we don't have to worry about um, whenever we get to the end of file this is gonna to go to false and the loop is gonna end automatically and also whenever it gets to the end of file the deconstructor is gonna close the file automatically so we don't have to explicitly write the file dot close so pretty much everything is handed to you you just gotta remember how to use it C++ made it really really simple to work with files if you really think about it you don't have to do all the background stuff so there you go that's how you write and read a custom file and again your file structure is going to be different depending on the type of application you make but that's the basics of it so thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe I know you guys probably have a lot of questions just ask me on my forum the newboston.com slash forum and I'm gonna go to McDonald's get an extra large milkshake and you uh, well, check out my next video. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you then.